Tel Drasil refers to an island off the northern coast of Kalimdor, and also the impossibly large tree of the same name which grows from it. Despite its colossal size, this tree is young, only a few years old, and was grown by the Night Elves after they had lost their previous world tree, Nordrasil, on the peaks of Mount Hyjal. In the closing days of the Third War proper, the Night Elves sacrificed Nordrasil in a gambit to save their world, ending the greater demon Archimon, the leader of the invasive demonic forces. The Night Elves created their new world tree in the aftermath, dwarfing the old one in size, but never regaining the immortality granted to them in ages past. The scale of Tel Drasil is massive. As it sprouted, it brought up copious amounts of soil, smaller trees and flora with it, creating an entire forest within its boughs. Its sprawling branches house the entire Night Elf capital province, as well as their greatest city, Darnassus. But Darnassus is mostly unoccupied, save for the essential merchants who keep the city functioning, and a great deal of the Night Elf command structure, like the High Priestess Tyranda Whisperwind. The Night Elves would gladly welcome their kind to the city, but find their strength divided across a continent at war unable to rest their aging bones in this new sanctuary. On the home front, crazed furbolgs and demonically touched beasts have appeared in the shadows of Teldrassil's enormity, occupying all the attention of the forest's guardians to ensure the protection of their new homeland. The Night Elven society has traditionally been divided between the female sentinels who acted as warriors and rangers of their forest homes, and the druids, the men who wore the Emerald Dream and could take on the visage of various animals in the corporeal world. However, the third war and the horrors caused by the Burning Legion have ended this tradition. Faced with a desperate situation on the mainland, the Night Elves are now allowing male warriors to be trained in Teldrassil, alongside female druids. They have ended their policy of isolation as well, siding with the Alliance against the Horde in a bid to strengthen the defenses of Teldrassil should the unthinkable happen and the Horde attack their sacred new home. And while the Night Elves seem to be throwing the old ways aside, they have doubled down on some of their more firmly held beliefs. Not a single practitioner of magic can be found in Teldrassil amongst those loyal to the Alliance whether they be Warlock or Magi. The Night Elves are still staunchly opposed to all forms of magic outside their priesthood or druidic classes. Their people keep the dark secret that magic can be sensed by otherworldly demons, pulling them to Azeroth like moths to a flame, causing the ceaseless threat posed by the Burning Legion to all free people. For the last 10,000 years, the Night Elves have watched their own wayward brothers fall victim to the sway of magic. They know firsthand the dangers posed by those who wield it. They have seen its world-sundering power. And while the Night Elves can do little to curb the rest of the Alliance's reliance on magic, each of their own has refrained entirely from its practice. Teldrassil has come to symbolize both rebirth and resilience for the Night Elves in the aftermath of the Third War. This monumental tree, home to their reformed society and sacred beliefs, stands as a fortress against the evil, which seeks to engulf the world in shadow and consume its very life essence. Here, the Night Elves have redefined old traditions to meet the evolving threats, while remaining unyielding on others, highlighting a cautious wisdom drawn from painful experience. And their home, Teldrassil, reaches ever skyward, reflecting the indomitable spirit of those who grow old but not weary, who bend without breaking, 
honoring their past to protect their future.